A few months ago, when Rick Santorum was still in the running, the Pope is going to control the Treasury. Really? Really? He's too extreme in his beliefs. Once again, the media misses the actual story. If you'd like a side of res religious extremists with your politics, no problem. Head to Charlotte. Extremists are going to be participating side by side with politicians from the Democratic National Convention in an event called Juma at the DNC, a Muslim prayer conference. Okay, Muslims want to pray, I don't really care. Who's involved? How is it connected? Well, the DNC lists the assembly as an official function, and it's hosted by everybody's favorite, the Grand Imam Siraj Wahaj. And you might remember him from some of his classic lines like, if only Muslims were clever politically, they could take over the United States and replace its constitutional government with a caliphate. <laughs> and who could forget this super classic? You know what this country is? A garbage can. It's filthy. But don't worry, because that's the old classic Siraj. He's a now a changed man. I don't know what his turning point was, but he now calls himself a moderate Muslim. Remember, nothing to see here, folks. The DNC says the leaders of the program are typical of the DNC community. Really? We're 11 years removed from this generation's Pearl Harbor. And are we now denying the Japanese were involved? Unrepentant Japanese? Because that's what this is. Can you imagine Harry Truman, or Adelaide Stevenson for that matter, having a prayer breakfast with an unconquered, unrepentant, and refusing to take any responsibility for the bombing Japanese? I don't think so. But Glenn, these are all moderate Muslims. It's sponsored by the Bureau for Indigenous Muslim Affairs. Really? These are Americans who believe in the Constitution and founding fathers, they'll tell you. Are they? There is one person that I trust to have this discussion with on what's really going on. You can call him a hate monger. You can call him a bigot against Muslims, except he's a Muslim. He's also a former lieutenant commander in the U.S. Navy and a proud American. He's the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. This is a book that everyone, every American should read. He's also the president and founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. I am proud to call him my friend, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Zudi, how are you, sir? Great, Glenn. It's uh, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. All right. Go ahead and start on your anti-Muslim rhetoric. This. Oh, boy, this, you know, I. <laughs> this I, I can't tell you how pro-Muslim. Go ahead. I, I can't tell you how pro-Muslim it is, Glenn, for Muslims to speak up against this uh, um, prayer service, which is going to be a cover for a radical group. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience, Glenn. You know, I've been to Charlotte. I went out and did a town hall with Jabril Huff, who's running this along with Siraj Wahaj. And he brought out 200 of his uh, uh, fellow radicals. And uh, they basically tried to tell the rest of us that they were the real Muslims. And we didn't know what Islam or Muslims were because we were anti-Islamist and tried to say that anybody that was against them was an Islamophobe. And what we have happening in Charlotte, Glenn, is no small issue because you have an aligning of two issues. You have one radical group that's been controlling the Muslim community in Charlotte for decades, and then you have the DNC that's decided to have its convention there. So these guys said, oh, we can mainstream ourselves so much better and have a prayer service right on the Friday at which the convention is due to start and let everyone think that we are moderate Muslims. The DNC says, oh, let's check off the moderate Muslim box and say that they can have their prayers. They give them the space, the websites, etc. When pressured about it, they say, well, you know, they're not official, but basically we're giving them the space. Now, if the KKK or the Nazi party decided to have a prayer service, I'm sure the DNC spokespeople would have something to say about it, and I know so, many Muslims in that area that would have nothing to do with Jibril Huff or Siraj Wahaj. Okay, before we get into them, I have to tell you, you're one of the kindest people I've ever seen, because if you really think that the DNC is a hapless victim in this, I think you're sadly mistaken. They know exactly who they're dealing with. They're, they're the ones bringing the Muslim Brotherhood into our, into our system of government right now. Am, am I wrong? 
No, you're not wrong. Okay. Uh, if you look at who's been invited on the list to the iftar dinner at the White House, uh, um, the the how closely knit uh, people like Congressman Ellison, who I talk about at length in my book about his apologetics on Islamism. If you look at our policy in Egypt and how much we've been facilitating and funding the Brotherhood's ascendancy there, you'll find that, uh, you know, I don't disagree with you. I mean, this guy running this, two years ago, he had an organization called the Islamic Political Party of America. I myself, wearing my Navy uniform in 1995, saw Siraj Wahaj at the Islamic Society of North America hold up the Quran and say that we as Muslims need to change the Constitution with this book from God because the document is written by men that runs this government. And, and I was chagrined, went to the microphone and told all 20,000 Muslims there that they need to leave this seditious meeting. And I talk about that in my book. And, you know, when I see these guys leading a prayer at the DNC, I just look at what's happening to our country and remember what our founding fathers fought for against theocracy, and I hope Muslims especially can wake up and no longer let these radicals represent us as Americans. Okay. Um, first of all, what is a Juma prayer? It's the Arabic word for our Friday congregational prayers, and okay. I think it's interesting that they chose to keep the Arabic term, but it's basically our Friday prayers. I, I, I knew you were going to say that, that you thought it was interesting, and I have no idea why you do. Why is that, why is that a tip-off? Well, because the supremacist mindset, Glenn, is to say that, for example, I say I believe in the God of Abraham. The Islamists say they believe in Allah, like they make it as if we pray to somebody else that we don't believe like the Christians and the Jews, and they want to separate us out. So whenever they try to have a function, they'll put in a, an Arabic word, transliterate it into English letters, and make it seem like it's some foreign thing, rather than saying it's like Sunday church services or Saturday Sabbath or, or Friday Sabbath services, etc. And it... it it's simply our congregational prayers, and that's what I call it and tell my children we're going to do on Friday. Okay. Um, I know that The Blaze is working on another follow-up story on this for tomorrow, um, but can you give me um, uh, who these two guys are, Wahaj and, and Hoth, in a nutshell? Do you know, you know, they say they're moderate Muslims now. I mean, we've read the Muslim Brotherhood literature. That's exactly what they say to say. Um, do you know of any turning point? Who are these guys? Well, this is the issue. We can't judge them based just on their prayer services, which they're free to do. As politicians, as theocrats, they have a long history of very radical ideas. Jibril Huff himself ran the Islamic Political Party of America, has said yesterday, actually, on Channel 9 in Charlotte, he told the reporter that American soldiers are the insurgents in Afghanistan and Iraq while the Muslims were defending their homes. I mean, here you have this guy who's running this thing saying that American soldiers are the enemies of Muslims. I mean, that's probably what Nidal Hassan thought. And if you look at Siraj Wahaj, he was an unindicted co-conspirator in the 93 bombing of the World Trade Center. He was a character witness for the blind sheikh. Andy McCarthy has talked about him, you know, significantly. And then I saw him talk about changing this government. He's a leader in the CARE organization, CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. He's being given an award by them in the next month, uh, along with Dennis Kucinich, another great <laughs> moderate thinker. But so, at, at the end of the day, you know, these are part of the Islamist Muslim Brotherhood legacy groups in America. Okay. Um, I've known you, you've been on the show since I first started, I think, on CNN. Um, you've been one of, I think, one of the only guests that have been on, you know, all of the iterator, iterator, iterations of the Glenn Beck program. Um, uh, as, as you look at where we've um, gone here, Zudi, and I have seen you um, not taken seriously um, by journalists because of people like CARE, et cetera, et cetera. They tried to dismiss you on Capitol Hill, and you never go away because you have so much credibility. This is the number one, I, I don't have the chart in front of me, but it has been all day, the number one charting story on The Blaze all day. The mainstream media has completely missed this. Um, what is the main um, takeaway that you get from the mainstream media not paying any attention to the story at all? What does it tell you about the health of our republic? 
Well, it tells me that we've lost vision. We've lost a sight of, we've allowed our country to be divided by a polarity of partisan bickering while we lose the long-term goal of what it means to be free, what it means to be a liberal society. And we're forgetting that these little battles that we have in Charlotte or that I've been fighting, as I wrote in my book, that uh, uh, you know most of the story in the book came because of the many of the platforms you've given me, Glenn, and I talk about that in the book. And at the end of the day, people like you are the people that allow us to explain to America that it's not just about the elections every cycle, it's not just about the next two months, but the long-term process of what's happening with Muslims in America, the battle within the mosques, within organizations, the battle within Europe about the identity of the West and the free societies versus Islamists, the battle within the Middle East of political Islam versus right. the liberal Muslims. And they're not going to win this if we push and help the liberal Muslims. But if we help the Brotherhood and others, we're going to lose to these 57 countries that are Muslim majorities and the, and the republic that we know will not be the way it was formed to be at the founding fathers. Zudi, thank you so much. We'll talk again, my friend. Back in a second.